Hello YouTube, this is Christonian here doing another indie showcase video on Powder. This is a, another roguelike game, kind of like Cardinal Quest, but this one actually has full inventory system, leveling up your characters, choosing of your gods, and you can save. Or I think we should be able to save, I've seen it through... Uh, David R64YT, or known as X in most Minecraft communities, that's what he's famous for, at least that's when I started subscribing to him. And also, uh, a shout out to Eurisgard. Uh he was the one that pointed me towards Powder, and sorry if someone else pointed me towards Powder before him, but uh, I think I did see it before uh, Eurus Guard uh, pointed it out because, like I said, Day or X did a video on it already, and uh, his videos are quite funny. So I hope I can be as funny. Uh, this is a roguelike. Uh, it's totally random. You can have tactical play, many things. It's based on hack and slash. I'm just going down based on what's on the powder site. Uh, random games like Roguelite, Dungeon Crawler, no games are the same. There's permadeath, yes you die, and that's it. No restoring a save game. So maybe there isn't a save game. I thought I saw X save though. Good roguelikes delete your save games. Ah, so that's what happens. <laughs> uh, how to win? You want to descend into the depths of the dungeon until you reach the foul demon known as he who the author cannot spell consistently which is Belzebub. Belzebub is a heroic or hero heroic combat dies in a way black heart there's 25 levels to the game and you have to go all the way down get his black heart and bring it all the way up there is a Nintendo DS version a Game Boy Advance Windows version, Mac version, and Linux of this game. Originally, Powder was a roguelike developed specifically for the Game Boy Advance. And the only reason he went around to this is he wanted a roguelike on the GBA. So that's why graphics tiles are 16 by 16 for more traditional characters. And he, having many more hours on uh, NetHack and uh, Dom and Diablos, got him into this idea so that's about it and it's Jeff L L Lat or Liat so now we'll just go right into it uh, we're gonna get back on here and we're gonna go probably tutorial I want to see what options there are mm. fonts maybe to make it a little bit easier You guys can vote on this kind of stuff too if you want. Comment. I might just go with the uh, classic. Go tutorial. So welcome to Powder. Your goal is a simple. Dive into level 25 of the dungeon to reach Balzabub. Slay him and return to the surface with his black heart. Plenty of nasty monsters standing your way. However, fortunately, the dungeon is littered with useful equipment. Go for updates at Zinclad slash Powder. And this is another free game. Uh, welcome to Powder. You see a ladder up. So this is the full tutorial. It'll explain everything down on the bottom, or at least hopefully to a close enough extent. So it's saying I can use uh, press up and down to scroll through the message. The so faster scrolling is page up and down. You've read it all when the arrows disappear at the bottom. Uh, key presses are written inside the brackets. Note that the case matters. To hit S to swap, you must use shift S when it's capitalized like that. Uh, powder can also be played entirely with the mouse. Special mouse hints are at the end of these help sections. When you have 
menus are visible. You can current, press enter, and press escape. The first task is to move up and down, left and right, etc. Or you can use your mouse. So I'm going to probably speed a little bit through this so it's not so boring. While playing, you can use question mark to bring up the help menu. As you explore the dungeon, press M for minimap, which makes sense. Uh, your location is the white square. Up and down ladders are green squares. So that's about it. what we need from there. So M. Okay. Uh, while you start your adventure, you're wearing anything, or you're not wearing anything, so press I. Use the cursor to target the chainmail and press enter, etc. So we're going to go up here first. Look, some earlier venture has a left item on the floor. Go and pick it up. To go over, you go on top of the item, press G, press I, and then equip. So we're going to go in, we're going to press G to pick up, I, and then we're going to equip these. And it seems to go right to the item where, it's, where it should be equipped automatically. Uh, this is the first time playing through, but I did watch X uh, play a couple funny episodes. So hopefully we can survive through this tutorial, because he died a couple times. Uh, passages in the dungeon can be blocked by a simple wooden door. Opening is straightforward. Walk into them. Uh, that's it. So walk in. Behind this door is a fearsome foe. Attacking an enemy with a simple equipped weapon is simply as walking into them. Uh, you can also swap locations. Uh, you can eat the corpse by pressing E once the corpse is there. Be warned that you are what you eat. So you'll get different attributes to whatever you just killed. So let's go eat it. Nom 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 nom. You pick up and you munch on a rat corpse. Because that's how I roll. Boulders are too large to pick up. In dungeons, if you see them, uh, you can remove them, or you can remove your, uh, you need to uh, free up both of your hands when you actually want to do a shift. Or it might be only with a boulder, but you can shift places with items, and we'll do it coming up. And everything is turn-based, so if you saw my health was down, and I recover health as I move around, back and forth. Uh, item use. Three different items are here on the floor. Figure out what they are, or if they're beneficial or dangerous. The easiest way to learn is by trial. Pick up the items by uh, walking over them using G, I, and then enter and figure out which ones you want to do. So we see a jade wand. So I pick up the jade wand. Fork lorks. Four lorks. Yeah. Scroll and a black potion. So let's zap that way. Zap with the jade wand. You learn that the jade wand is a wand of ice. Woohoo! Let's see the scroll. Let's read it. You read, you learn that an evil scroll of folklore is a evil scroll of magic mapping. You are less aware of your surroundings. Oh, less. So it actually took away the areas I've discovered. Let's try dipping this wand into this black stuff. You dip a wand of ice into the black potion. A thick slime coats it. You learn that evil black potion is an evil poison potion. So just by dipping it there, uh, we survived because we could have swallowed that and uh, drank some uh, poison. Uh, you can throw individual items by going uh, I and then you press enter on them and then you say quiver. And you can throw anything pretty much in this game. Uh, it will appear beside the item to be marked. So a Q will tell you and then you press F to throw. So G, we'll pick up all these daggers, G, G, G. You grope on the floor, foolishly. So I, let's, I think, enter, yeah, 
quiver. Enter quiver. Enter quiver. Quiver. So now, I think if we open this door, there's enemies. So F forward. Rat dies on contact. Rat dies again. Yeah, killed it before it even touched me. So to pick up all these items again, it's G. I think I just picked up the body. Yeah, because I'm weird. What the heck, I have a whole bunch of bodies. So let's eat those. You dine on a rat corpse. There's nothing here to eat. Because I press it again. Oh, look at that, we got a skeleton now. Huh! So you could actually pick up the corpses. And if we get a necromancy thing, we could have a whole bunch of skeletons. Okay, what's happening? Inventory, let's see if we can eat a skeleton. You munch on rat bones. Num, 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 num. That doesn't say anything. Uh, signpost, let's go down this way. Secret doors. This is a room would seem to be a dead end. However, not e everything is as it seems. Press S repeatedly when standing beside walls, and it will search for doors. Might help to press the right button. There we go. Hi-ho. Spells and skills. As you explore the dungeon's powder, you will encounter books that hold powerful skills and arcane spells. To unlock these, first uh, pick up the book by walking on it and hitting G. Then raise your inventory. Then use your inventory and you can read it. La -dee -da, -dee da A ruined red book. A blue book. So let's go over here. So you, uh, you have read the book. You have three free spell slots. So we have magic missile, flash, sticky flame, fireball, fire strike, and sunfire. You learn that the ruined book is a tomb of fire or a tome of fire. I always say tomb for some reason. Okay, read. You have two skill slots. You learn dodge or you can learn dodge, moving target, Evade traps, dual wield, ooh, ambidextrous, which means you can use on either hand, rage, ranged weapons, and impro or impro improved attack, I guess. I don't know. It says improvised attack. So I don't know. Maybe you just went. <laughs> you learn out that that's a manual of guile. Hmm. So like for a uh, thief. So let's read it. And we'll put in some, let's see, dual wield, what do we need? No, nope, doesn't say any requirements, so. Many naive warriors learn this skill thinking double the weapons means double the damage. They then learn that it is important to become skilled with both weapons that they wish to wield. Even then, uh, one may only get an extra attack with the offhand for every two attacks with the primary weapon. Uh, those harboring fantasies of entering battle with twin longswords should be cautioned that when the weapon in the off hand is not smaller than the one in the main hand, it is even harder to wield. Hmm. Yes, and let's get ranged weapons maybe. Um, read. Or ambidextrous, and then it doesn't matter which hand I have. Yeah, we'll do ambidextrous because they were complaining. Yeah, see? Instead of concentrating on your strengths, you focused on your weakness. Your so-called offhand is no longer distinguishable from your primary hand. You can use either hand equally effective. This means it is no longer important that the second weapon be lighter than the first. So I could have two long swords or two war hammers or I think war hammer needs two uh I don't know what happened there, but uh, Tomb of Fire. So we have Magic Missile, Flash. Let's see Fireball. So you need Flash and Magic Missile. Sure, now. 
Let's see. Can we get any of these ones? Flame strike. No, oh, you need all the other stuff. So let's re or learn magic missile. The first attempt to project one's will at a distance is always the hardest. The magic magic missile uh, spell is most novices' first experience with summoning kinetic energy. So it is often scoffed at by higher level mages as a cantrip for newbies. Wise wizards learn well the lessons that it teaches and are always watching for a chance to use it. So we'll say yes. Learn magic missile. And we'll just read the next one. Now let's see sticky flames. No, it requires flash. So nope. Flash. A blinding white light sears the optic nerve of any unfortunate targeted by this spell. If the light doesn't kill them, their temporary blindness will likely uh, nonetheless make them easy pickings. So, yep. Okay. So, let's... I think it's Z. Yeah. Magic missile. That away. Psst. You cast magic missile. You send a magic missile from your fingertips. You crush the rat. The rat crumples into a heap. The ray bounces and you strike yourself. <laughs> Let's back oh back up a little bit. Magic missile. Bzz. Cast magic missile, sending a magic from your fingertips. You strike the rat. It bounces a heap. The ray bounces and doesn't hit me. So that's good. Magic missile again. And you strike yourself. Cause I'm a goof. Darkness. Not all of the powder powder is well lit. Many areas are dark, only allowing you to see your immediate surroundings. Light sources can be invaluable in mapping these areas faster and to ensure you get to jump on many foes rather than the other way around. Hmm. Here be dragons. So hopefully there's probably a dragon behind that door, maybe. Ah, let's go for it. We're ready. You force the door open. Ah! Fireball explodes. The red dragon ignores the red dragon attack. The red dragon burns you. Can I go diagonally? You completely miss. The red dragon slashes you. Ah! Breeze fire and the fireball explodes. The red dra oh. You collapse in a pool of your own blood. You have died. You will get used to this. In other games, you may have saved or reloaded a character to get past tough battles. This is not recommended in powder. Most likely, you will get yourself in a situation where no saving or restoring can save you, and you end up frustrated. Instead of die often and try to learn from your deaths, whether it's to avoid some otherwise peaceful dungeon inhabitants, identify items, there is a lesson almost in every death. The good news is that the random nature of the levels makes every game a new adventure. So this is Christonian here, just doing another indie showcase for you guys for Powder, which is free, and I'll give you the link down below. It uh, is very good. It's a uh, roguelike again and it's very random. So you guys can follow me up and I'll have another video after this where we actually get into the adventuring. Even though I didn't learn everything possible, but at least we tried. So this is Christonian here playing Powder. Thanks for coming by, guys. Thanks for your advice. Thanks for your comments and thanks for your subs. Bye, guys.